Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Wassenbauer. I get asked a lot whether a lot of information online is accurate, almost as if people really suspect that it's not. In particular, lately I've been asked about a podcast of Andrew Huberman. Huberman, in case you haven't listened to his podcast, is a smart guy. He becomes a mini expert on health and biology topics, and he really tries to break it down for people. I know this podcast, and he speaks a lot on a lot of subjects because he's a neurobiologist and an optho researcher, and I listen to his podcast. And what I tell my patients about podcasts like this is that the devil's in the details. Specifically, what research tells us and what clinical practice are often different, and not because either one is wrong. For instance, microneedling. Microneedling can definitely stimulate hair growth, and it depends what kind of microneedling you're using. For instance, the depth should be about two and a half millimeters, which means it probably should bleed. And the needles also have to, um, well, there's some question about whether or not needles should create stretch, whether they should be wedge-shaped or like whether it would work if it's just a little pin, because the stretch receptors in the skin have a lot to do with whether something heals or grows. So it means it should be wedge-shaped and microneedling like this is usually painful and uh, probably a little bit bloody. So without numbing, most patients don't choose to endure that kind of daily you know, pain. It's also a treatment that requires maintenance and it doesn't work for everybody. If the hair is already gone, only transplant will bring it back. Another question people have about these kind of things is finasteride and dutasteride. Do, is one better than the other? Well, they both target dihydrotestosterone and both are very safe with few long-term side effects. One last question, direct application of caffeine. Well, direct application of caffeine is effective. The problem is that the four and a half, four to five hour half-life. So in order to have any effect, the hair follicles need constant exposure. So caffeine is less practical than something like minoxidil, which has a 22.6 hour half-life. I hope that explains a little bit of how uh, all of the science and all of the actual practical clinical applications uh, are a little bit different, but they both can be correct.